So Martin, you have been hitting this message since what year? 2009 is when I wrote my first book, The Lights in the Tunnel. What level of preparedness do you think that that we have, either in the U.S. or elsewhere, for what AI will mean in terms of the workforce, education, government, democracy, media? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a pretty minimal level of preparedness. And, you know, that's not surprising. I mean, if, if you look at history, the big changes, adaptations happen when we really get into a crisis, right? I mean, uh, we had the Great Depression, and the Great Depression produced social security and unemployment insurance. All of those things would have been unimaginable before that crisis. So I've, I've always kind of felt that you know, the kind of things that, that you've been talking about as well, like a universal basic income are, are, are ideas that I think need to be considered seriously in order to adapt to this for the future. But it's, it's just an extraordinarily radical idea, right, in terms of the political context, um, especially in the U.S. And I've, I've always felt that there's almost no possibility of, of something like that happening until there's a fairly dire crisis, right? So that probably will be what it takes. My hope is that by having at least a conversation about this and making people aware of it and maybe doing some experiments with UBI to gather the necessary data, information that we need to really craft a, a program that if and when we do get into that crisis, then maybe we can adapt pretty quickly. But, uh, you know, just just in terms of the politics in the United States, which are just getting worse and worse, and, and it's impossible to do even the smallest thing, let alone something something so radical like like a UPI that uh, you know I, I think it will probably take a crisis you know before before we really make those kinds of changes. And uh, how do you see a crisis like that uh, shaping up? And incidentally, I agree with your estimation in many ways. Back in the '70s, when Nixon was looking at basic income equivalent, um, they actually did large scale trials in communities around the country, saying, "Oh, let's see how it goes." So uh, I. Uh, hark and back to that because it, it seems like we're light years away from that now in the U.S. where if, if someone were to look at it and be like, oh, let's just try this in, in places. I think we should be running trials all over the country, to your point. Um, but how do you see this crisis manifesting? Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to predict, right? I mean, for example, when you wrote your book, you talked about um, trucker revolts, right? The truckers were going to block the highways and stuff like this. And as I have said, now it looks like it's more to the, the white collar that's progressing faster, right? So, so we're going to see the white collar workers maybe impacted first. And actually, there's a hopeful note in that, I think, isn't there? Because, you know, if it's fast food workers and Walmart workers, then those people don't have a lot of power, you know. But white collar workers, you know, high income consultants and attorneys and people like that, I mean, that's I mean, that's more or less the backbone of the, the Democratic Party, really, in terms of the people that the, the you know, drive the politics. Um, so I, I think there's some hopeful note in that this might be a bit top heavy in terms of how it impacts and, and actually um, impacts some groups of people that actually have more influence and power over the political system than, than other groups of workers might. And maybe that will help to drive things a little faster. Hey, YouTube, glad you're enjoying the podcast. If you really like it, hit subscribe, and then YouTube will notify you every time we have a bang-up new guest. Thank you.